Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano and a chef on a mission. Today's mission is salmon. I just did a recent video, some content on uh, farmed salmon versus wild salmon and got lots of comments. And one of the comments was from uh, one of the viewers and said, Marcus, can you do a video on Verlasso salmon, please? Verlasso salmon is a salmon farm in Patagonia in Chile. And I actually did do one on uh, Verlasso a couple years ago. So I responded back and said, I've done one. And um, I said, I've already done one and we'll do another one. It's GMO fungus fed, but it's safe. LOL was my exact response. This person responds back. That's funny because I work at a place and they tell us that it's free of antibiotics, heavy metals, and no color added. I'm just wondering if that's all BS or not. You're also right about people being ignorant when it comes to salmon. Um, so let's take a look at Verlasso's website. So Verlasso, first of all, has a certification from, or is recognized from the Monterey Bay Aquarium because they're raising a more sustainable salmon. Now, what that means is, this is why Monterey Bay Aquarium gave them the next notch up on their rating scale, on their, in their seafood watch. It's because farm salmon to begin with, uh, well, salmon in general, but farm salmon require a lot of other fish to raise it. So you have to harvest all this wild fish, turn it into fish pellets and to feed, and then feed it back to the salmon. You have about a three to one ratio of lost protein on a global scale for this. So if every three pounds of wild fish you're catching, it's only gonna yield one pound of wild of a farm salmon. This is the principal detrimental problem with farmed salmon. You're putting more resources into it than you're gonna get out of it. So to say any salmon is sustainable is really a far stretch of marketing imagination BS. So Verlasso says, well, we're gonna cut back, not eliminate, but cut back our usage of wild harvested food, other fish, and we're going to genetically take, take a genetic yeast modification, genetically modified yeast strain, and we're gonna laboratory raise that, and that's going to be the protein source for the fish. So Monterey Bay Aquarium said, oh wow, you're not using nearly as much salmon feed or other food, other fish protein on the wild market out of the wild caught population. So that right there is making your product more sustainable. It's making it a, giving it an above average over the other salmon farms that are out there. And that's commendable by them. They found an alternative food source for them. So let's just go down their website or one of their pop-up PDFs from Verlasso. Verlasso salmon is an Atlantic salmon raised entirely on site at our Patagonia farm. So a lot of fish farms will hatch at one place and then ship to another place and everything's not done on site. So they're saying everything's done on site. We own our broad stock, so they own, and grow our fish from egg to harvest in a controlled condition to ensure their optimal health and the health of the environment. Here are some key topics to keep in mind when, sh when sharing about Verlasso salmon with your customers. What is harmoniously, harmoniously raised? Harmoniously raised is an approach to aquaculture. Our goal is to keep, uh, our goal is to always maintain harmony or balance with nature. That means keeping the demand for salmon in line with more sustainable, environmentally uh, conscious farming, salmon farming methods. Okay. First of all, the salmon farming industry at one point, not, not too long ago, and a lot, a lot of farms still are, horrendous. They are, they are despicable. If you go onto many of these salmon farms worldwide and make the slightest changes, you can make claims that we're making improvements. We're doing things that other farms aren't doing. An average salmon farm dumps feces the equivalent of a village of the, or town, a city of a population of 10,000 people daily on the bottom of the ocean floor. This is a dead zone. This builds up feet and feet, five feet, 10 feet deep. For kilometers and miles away, nothing can live, okay? The, <clears throat> what these salmon farms do is they, it's a pure detriment to the environment. 
The other fish that are in the area, the wild fish, whether they're salmon or other fish, get disease. Disease spreads out, especially salmon farms. They're notorious for putting salmon farms in the migratory paths of wild salmon. Now, I don't believe in Chile they have that issue, but if you're going into British Columbia, you have that issue. British Columbia farm raised king salmon. They're right next to all the salmon runs, the wild salmon runs. There's lice, the disease gets out there, the fish swim in and out of the farms and they go and do their thing in the, in the, in the wild and spreading all that filth and disease into the wild population. So they're making claims, the best sustainable farms there are making so many claims that they're saving salmon from the wild, they're saving it. When they're right there directly poisoning the fish that are swimming by and without even harvesting the fish, they're dwindling the population of wild drastically. There's a major problem. There's all, when you have to think that you're gonna put a farm in wherever you're gonna put it, okay? Whether it's a land farm, whether it's a fish farm, whether it's a cattle farm, wherever you're gonna put it, there's gonna be an environmental effect. There's gonna be environmental consequences. So as a result, a company can say, oh, instead of putting 250 50,000 cattle in a five mile square radius, we're gonna put 150,000 cattle in a five mile square radius and call this more humanely, more harmonious with nature and this and this. So see how anybody can just spin that and totally, okay? They're not saying any specifics on here. So I'd have to say, well, what, what specifically are you doing? You can, people can just say, and marketers know what to do. These companies know what to do, okay? This is just all talk to me. I don't know them personally. I, I don't know their parent company. I don't know who the company is. I'm just going through and reading what pop up on my radar. And as a chef and a restaurateur, what would make me drill, if a salesman walked into me, I would drill him back with these questions, okay? So I, I'm not doubting that they're doing a better job by any by any means than other farms, because salmon farms are, are, are horrid, 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 horrid. Okay, so what makes Verlasso sustainable? By replacing fish oil with yeast rich in omega-3s in our salmon's diet, which I talked upon in the beginning, we've reduced the quantity of wild caught feeder fish we use by 75%. So they're still using 25% feeder fish, 25% other fish to make this up. So now as opposed to three pounds, um, to one pound, they're maybe at a one to one pound ratio, right? Okay, but they're still using other resources to make up the difference. That's just a, a quick mathematical, maybe it's eight tenths of a pound to one pound something of wild fish, of other fish protein to make up their one pound. Um, our salmon thrive on a nutrient rich diet that is far more sustainable for the environment. Okay, now what does sustainable for the environment mean? I don't really know. They're not going into any details here. It's all, it's two sentences, it's one paragraph. Um, I mean, sure, by not harvesting other fish from the wild, you are making it more sustainable. That's a no brainer, okay? Um, nutrient rich diet. You can dial in on food in laboratories to make things certain nutrients. You can add certain things. You can do certain things to make that food dialed in and be a highly processed food and say, we need this vitamin, they need this pill, salmon or cattle need something. They claim that veal, they claim that veal is so nutritionally dialed in, you know, and it's milk fed and it's that. The reason why veal flesh is white is because it's anemic. How can something that's anemic be dialed into a nutrient-rich diet? So you have no idea what these what these marketers mean by nutrient-rich, uh, rich, by nutritional. There's no there's no comparisons of what other salmon eat versus what this salmon eats on its graphed out scale and say, here's the nutrient that we're doing, here's this and this. I want to see words like krill, anazacithin, carotenoids. I'd like to see those kind of terms applied to this. Maybe they think that uh, uh, people like me are out of the norm and not going to be reading their stuff. I don't know. Uh, Verlasso is located in Chile. Why are Velasco salmon raised in Chile? The Patagonian waters of Chile provide ideal conditions for growing salmon. The ocean waters are naturally free of contaminants from industrial development, which reduces the toxins the fish encounter. Okay, great. You, wherever you pick a salmon farm, you want to, wherever you eat fish from in the ocean, you want to make sure that it's free of contaminants. They swim, they eat other things that are in these contaminants, and it bioconcentrates in them, and yes, 
site of raising fish is super, super, super important. Maybe they did pick a great site here. Maybe that's one thing that is their shining star. Maybe they have a fantastic site, clean, crisp, cold, pristine waters. Maybe there's no runoff there, but you really have no idea. Like all these salmon from um, the Faroe Islands and Scot Scotland, they claim these are clean waters. See, every salmon farm, Bay of Fundy, all these places claim we have clean water. We have that. You look on any website, salmon farm web salmon website that's their always their one claim to fame we have cold uh turbulent waters clean contaminant free fresh clean waters for our fish that's just a picturesque when you go to a grocery store and you see the painting of the cattle on green on a green grass pasture above the milk section that they're just painting the picture for you okay that's just painting la 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 everything here is fine and dandy and this is a cow and this is green pastures and so they're painting a picture for you they're making an association that we have clean pristine waters okay now that's what a lot of salmon farms are saying so you figure out if that's just bs or marketing or if they do have the same pristine waters that all these other salmon farms claim to have um, are hormones used to raise Verlasso salmon? No, we don't use hormones to raise our salmon and never will. That's point blank clear. I like that. I like that line. Very definitive. No, we don't. No, we won't. We never have. Are Verlasso salmon treated with antibiotics? Now, this is a comment that the person made that where they're working, they said they're not being treated with antibiotics. First of all, when you raise fish in those kind of I don't care how clean the water is, the population density, um, you're going to encounter disease. It's just, it's part of the game, people. It's what happens. It's what happens. You're dealing with fish that are not a wild, true wild stock. It's like hybridized fruits and vegetables. It's like a wild blueberry versus a cultivated blueberry. Wild chocolate versus cultivated chocolate. Once you start hybridizing and cultivating and refining the species, you're gonna lose certain things like part of the immune system. You're gonna lose certain things that the truly wild indigenous species are immune to. Um, wild blueberries have a lot more antioxidants. That's the immune system of the blueberry, okay? Farmed, cultivated blueberries don't have nearly as many antioxidants, sometimes half as less or a third as less. So the wild strain is always the strongest. So you're taking salmon, you're a, 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 an engineered salmon, a hybridized salmon, a formulated salmon, a salmon that's been raised to, to convert better. You're putting it into a farm situation where it's where there's other salmon all around. There's feces all over. Okay, I don't care what they say. Fish still have to go to the bathroom. You can have the cleanest, pristine waters. They're still going to release tons and tons of feces. That's the bottom line. So the fish don't wear diapers. They don't go to the bathroom in a segregated area. They swim in it, they go in it. The average salmon farm does two salmon per bathtub. That's the density. A sustainable, harmoniously salmon farm will do one salmon per bathtub. That's the density. They're still swimming in their own feces. They're going to get disease. That's the bottom line. Disease happens here. So this person where they work they claim that there's no antibiotics in the salmon. Here we go. If our fish become sick, hmm, restoring their health is top priority. We use antibiotics to treat disease. There you go. They use antibiotics, people. They use antibiotics, but they've made it, they've twisted it in a nice way, not as a preventative measure. Of course, we test fillets to ensure there are no antibiotics present at the time of harvest. Uh, you know, do they test every single fillet? I learned a long time ago in the beef industry. You get a batch of 100 cattle, 500 cattle, you take carcass, you take a sample, you test two or three head out of 500 cattle. If that comes free of residue, that means the whole batch is tested. Are they testing every single fillet of salmon that's coming out of there? Or are they spot checking? I don't know, it doesn't say it. Is this BS or is this true? Is there somebody there testing now? What are the residuals that are allowed? Is there a loophole saying, well, if it's less than one part per million, is is that still allowed? I don't know. This this is very unclear with this website, but you see how people can companies can totally manipulate this whole situation and saying, Oh, we have clean this, clean that, antibiotic free, this and that. 
So they're treating with antibiotics. It doesn't say how often, maybe every month, fish need treatment. Now, the cleanest salmon farms, the so-called cleanest, most sustainable salmon, Lac Duhart, other farms out there, they all have outbreaks. They all have to put salmon down. They have to kill millions of pounds of salmon at one time when there's an outbreak, when there's a disease outbreak, these flu outbreaks. It happens, people. The most claimed sustainable farms get outbreaks. It's part of the business. It's what they deal with. Of course, they're just not gonna throw antibiotics into the food supply as a preventative measure. They're gonna wait until they have to use it. Antibiotics are not cheap, as many of you know that have that don't have prescription, uh, prescription meds. Antibiotics aren't cheap. There's no medication that's cheap. So of course, you're just not gonna throw money out and just say, hey, there you go, preventative, preventative, preventative. Some people say antibiotics make a fish grow faster. They say cattle make a cattle grow faster. It's part of the whole regime to begin with. They know it's gonna happen, so they put it in the food. Here, they're doing it as needed. I don't know how soon as needed is. We have an almond butter, peanut butter company that we buy from, once again, nut butters. Lots of peanuts are always recalled standard. It's always to recall peanuts because of contaminants. This company, 45 years in business, has zero recalls. That's the kind of data I'm looking for. I'm not looking for, oh, we don't recall often or this or that. No, they have zero recalls on their peanuts in 45 years because they're using a better peanut. It's not saying we've never used an antibiotic, we've never had to. We use it when we need to. And how often do you need to? I don't know. You make that decision. Is Verlasso uh, environmentally certified? Verlasso seeks the guidance of many environmentalists, organizations, to ensure that we're still using best practices possible. We are currently guided by the proposed standards of the Aquaculture Stewardship Council, a group funded by the World Wildlife Fund. Okay, there's a ton of a lot of organizations out there that certify, that say this is better, this is better. You have to understand, there's no such thing as truly 100% sustainable anything, especially when it comes to seafood. You're using a resource. You're using a resource that is dwindling left and right, that is trying to feed the population of a world that's gonna be nine billion people. There is no such thing as something that's truly 100% sustainable. It's the word sustainability, and it's used in my restaurant business, it's used in my business, is a term that people love to see because it's training you to make you feel good about what you're eating. There's certain things that are much more sustainable. They're raising this, this yeast, omega-3 rich yeast, yeast. Did you know one acre of hemp will grow three tons of hemp protein? One acre of hemp, three tons. That's much more sustainable than any other crop out there. So why didn't they resort to growing hemp and using hemp? Hemp is very high in omega-3s, super high in omega-3s, very clean protein, lots of other things, lots of antioxidants, lots of really good things in hemp that would make a massive difference. Why aren't they doing that? I don't know. Is Will salmon eat hemp? I'm sure salmon will eat hemp. You add some flavoring, you add a little bit of fish oil, you add whatever you want to, you put it in a pellet. They're eating crap anyway to begin with. It's bits and pieces and parts and so are cattle in this. It's just all recycled crap. So why wouldn't they eat hemp? I don't know. It's a good question. So what, you know, so true sustainability is very, very hard to come by. You want to be, you want to be truly sustainable, walk out your door and pick some weeds and eat some weeds, eat some dandelions, which is totally all edible, by the way. Your yard is edible, everything there. You want to be sustainable, go out and forage your food. Go out and have a couple chickens, eat your own eggs, okay? Use what you have, use what you've produced. So a lot of people do this nowadays. It's quite possible to live off of your land on a much more plant-based diet. If everyone wanted to be sustainable and everyone would have cattle and chickens, there's not enough space on the earth for that. It's just not possible. There is enough space for produce though, uh, especially when you're talking on things like hemp. Um, how is Verlasso salmon harvested? Okay. The harvesting process is as humane as possible to roost trauma and preserve their quality and flavor of the fish. Okay, this is basically just a whole open-ended thing like, okay, yeah, we're harvesting, you know, trauma-free or as least trauma as possible, reduce trauma. I don't think any salmon farm will admit on their website, hey, we traumatize our fish or any beef company. We traumatize the cattle. This is just, oh, as an added bonus, we try to re reduce the trauma. Well, what is reducing trauma? Are you killing 10 at a time or are you killing 20 at a time? Are you killing a hundred a time? Are you reducing trauma by poisoning them? Like pigs 
when pigs get in the big processing plants, when they get put down, they get gassed. They go into these rooms and they get gassed and shocked, okay? And they have to suffocate for air. Are they doing that? Or are they being shot in the head, these pigs? So reducing trauma is really an open-ended, blank statement that I really don't know where it's going. I wanna see how are they reducing trauma? If you're such a, a what I wanna say, transparent company, put some videos up. Put some videos of the farm. Maybe there are videos out there that I haven't seen. I searched the internet up and down for Veloso. I use a lot of keywords. I searched their website. I searched YouTube. I wasn't coming up with much at all on them whatsoever. As a company, you're making all these claims. Be more transparent. Show us in the laboratory how this omega-3 rich yeast is being grown. Show us. Show us people in lab coats that are actually doing this. Or show me a guy who's farming hemp, who's supporting a real farm that can grow hemp much more sustainable, three tons per acre, that can feed humans, that can feed fish, that can feed a lot of things. Cattle can make nutritional products, that can make uh, cereal, can make all sorts of things. Show me that. Show me what you're doing. I want to see. This is a transparent world. People are willing and want to see what's going on there. We're used to YouTube. We're used to the phone. We're used to seeing what we want when we want. Okay, for Verlasso to sell me on all this, I want to see more. That's my precautions I'm taking as a chef, as an advocate, as somebody who's concerned for my own health. Show me more. Next question. Are farmed salmon at risk of ISA? That's infectious salmon anemia. Are farmed salmon, not their farmed salmon, are farmed salmon at risk? Infectious salmon anemia, anemia or ISA, is a virus that affects Atlantic salmon, but not humans. To reduce the likelihood of ISA, the Chilean government has introduced a variety of new environmental protections. Verlasso takes these measures further by significantly lowering pen densities. So ISA is much less of a threat to our salmon. Smoke and mirrors again. I'm sure that they could, they would, maybe they have had problems. Again, Locke Duhart claims, you know, this, this, and this, and you can go online and see videos of people sitting there videotaping these so-called super sustainable farms that have taken all the precautionary measures. You look at their website, they look fantastic, and they're killing millions of pounds of fish because they had a breakout of infectious salmon anemia. They had a breakout of something and they have to put all the fish down. They're not saying it's not happening here. If you read that very carefully, they're not saying they don't have it. They're not saying they've never had it. They're not saying, again, the almond butter company, the peanut butter company we buy from, 45 years, never had a recall. They're stating that as a fact. They're not stating anything here as a fact. They're saying just, we have have measures, we've reduced pen, den density, den, pen density. So is it one salmon per bathtub? two salmons per bathtub. Where are you at as far as the average industry average? Where are you going? Where are you at? How much are you reducing it? You still have to keep in mind that they're a company. Profits are king. Uh, production is king. They're, they're going to figure out a way where we can get more at a certain risk ratio and gets a salmon farm. You're not out there picking wild dandelions for yourself at home. You have to say, how do we get more production, minimize risk, and make this business plan work? Now, the person who in the, who answered this, uh, who commented as well, uh, made a comment saying about there's no colorings in the fish, okay? As a consumer, I wouldn't believe that based upon reading their website. Not anywhere at all in this PDF fact sheet does it say that they're getting its natural color of the salmon from their diet. Okay, that's one of the biggest problem with farmed salmon is they're not eating a natural diet. They're not eating the carotenoid, the anazacithin, that super high, powerful carotenoid antioxidant that you krill eat and that's out there for these wild fish to eat and consume that turns the flesh this nice, deep, red, orangish. So nowhere on this does it say that it's getting its color from its diet. I'm a skeptic. I only can assume that it's getting a coloring, or they would have. They're smart people. All these salmon farms, all these big companies are smart people. They're smart marketers. If it was happening, you bet they'd have it there. I mean, they're doing stuff, they're putting on stuff here that they're not doing that they're claiming, like the antibiotics. Oh, we don't reuse them preventatively, but we do have to use them from time to time. So they're saying that. 
I want to see a statement on here saying, we don't color our salmon. So if I were to go to this grocery store, this market, and I was to be pitched all this, I would say, I'm calling your bluff. I'm calling your bluff. There are antibiotics. There probably is coloring because I can't see anything else here. I'm, call I'm sorry, but I'm calling your bluff. Buyer, beware. Read, read, read. Look through this. It's a business. It's an industry. It's an industry that has been troubled ever since the beginning because it's a, because of how they raise these fish in open pens. And tops might be open. They might be so, but they're they're open pens. Okay, they have holes in the nets that are being raised out in the in the ocean. Okay, that's the bottom line. If salmon farms truly want to be sustainable, if they truly care and truly want to be sustainable, more sustainable, they would go to a closed containment system, which is inland, where the water and the and the feces and all that is contained and filtered out, and then you can recycle the water, you can clean up the water with other species, with plants, this and that, and sort of re and reuse, cycle the water back and use it, purge the fish, keep the fish super clean. But the problem with a closed containment system, it's not enough money doesn't make enough money for these industries. These industries, it's like people doing um, doing sports enhancement drugs. If you're not doing sports enhancement drugs, the guys you're competing against are doing them and you're not gonna stay, stay up with them. You're not gonna be on that bike. You're not gonna be on that field. You're not gonna be in that race. You're not gonna be, you're not gonna be doing what they're doing if you're not in the game. If you're not on the juice, if you're not in the game, if you're not on the goods, and this is part of the goods, is the way that they do it. You're not gonna be able to compete. There's only a very certain few market that will actually pay the price for something that's that the average consumer, the average consumer's view is the same product. There's only so many people that will actually say, I'm gonna pay the price for farmed salmon as the same price as wild salmon when I can buy wild salmon. There's not many people that are gonna go for that. If you're gonna spend that extra money, you will buy wild salmon because you're convinced your story in your head is a wild salmon is so much better, it's more sustainable, has more nutrients, has whatever. And that's what you're going to go for, okay? So buyer beware, be skeptical, ask questions, and just don't assume because you're reading something like this that it's 100% legit. They might be nice people, but I personally wouldn't serve it at my restaurant. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.